All right, so this is going to be defeating Adventism number six and who changed the Sabbath. So let's look at this. Constantine. I call him, he's a Sabbath bad guy, right? He's accused, uh, Constantine's constantly accused, it's an old argument predating Seventh-day Adventism that Constantine changed the Sabbath. So let me show you something here. Here is a book, this the actual book printed in 1635, and you're going to see um, copies, you're going to see where you can zoom in onto the title page, and I'm going to reference a page in here, by a Dr. White. Bishop of Ely. He's refuting, in 1635, English Sabbatarians in the early 1600s. So let me say this about Seventh-day Adventism. Um, except for uh, perhaps the investigative judgment, Adventism doesn't have an original thought in its theological head. It virtually copied everything from somebody else. And uh, at least in this topic, in this example of Constantine changing uh, the Sabbath in 321 AD, they totally copied it. So, well, I'll show you here in a minute where they got it from. But let's just look at this argument, see how far back it goes. So you can see here in the original book, and look at the title page of the book here. I love the title page. Read along with me. A treaty of the Sabbath day containing a defense of the orthodox doctrine of the Church of England against Sabbatarian novelty. Well, gee, and you know what? Here we are, almost 400 years later, and we are doing exactly what Dr. White, Bishop of Ely, is doing in his book here from 1635. We are dealing with Sabbatarian novelty. Only we know something now, that he didn't know back in 1635. So let's look. Just to show you by example, look in the lower right hand corner on page 79 and, and you can see where he's actually dealing with the argument about Constantine the Great making a law that Christians under his domain should celebrate the Lord's Day and he's refuting, as the title says, Sabbatarian novelty of his day. So. There it is on those two pages. We're not going to spend a lot of time on that. But let's do talk about where the Seventh-day Adventists got this argument from. You know where they got it from? They got it from the Seventh-day Baptist. Seventh-day Adventists really are nothing more than converted Seventh-day Baptists. Um, Seventh-day Baptists, and I'll sh let me show you this here. I'll show you this book right here. This book is part of a three-volume set. This is printed in 1910, and it's entitled Seventh-day Baptist in Europe and America. And I got the bookmark here for the page, and guess what the Seventh-day Baptists are talking about? Constantine changing the Sabbath and starting his Sabbath law. That's where at least the Seventh-day Adventist got the notion from there. Now. My first point there, I said Seventh-day Adventists are nothing more than converted Seventh-day Baptists. How can I say such a thing? Well, let's look at this book. And you can see a picture of it here right now. Uh, Origin and Progress of the Seventh-day Adventists, 1926, second edition. And what we are going to do next is we're going to look on this page here. We're going to look at page 182 and 183, and you see the lovely Miss Rachel Preston on the left-hand side of your screen, and her son-in-law on the right-hand side, William Farnsworth. So, we are going to really pay attention to what's on the right-hand side. That's why we're going to look at page 183. And you can, I just want to, I'll point a couple key things out to you here, where I'm can substantiate my argument that Seventh-day Adventists are nothing more than converted Seventh-day Baptists. So look at this. Miss Rachel Preston, a Seventh-day Baptist. You know what she did? She went to an Adventist church with a fistful of Seventh-day Baptist Bible tracts proving that the Sabbath is Saturday. She distributed those Bible tracts at her son-in-law's church the people in the church read them and said, yeah, we're going to start celebrating the Sabbath. And one by one, they all stood up and did so. And then you can see here on the page, on the bottom of page 183, it says what? Thus was brought into being the first Seventh-day Adventist church. 
So what are Seventh-day Adventists? They're just converted Seventh-day Baptists. The very first Seventh-day Adventist church came from Rachel Preston who handed out a bunch of Bible tracts and converted everybody to the Sabbath notion, Sabbatarian novelty, and there you have the first Seventh-day Adventist church. So, I mean, what happens when a Seventh-day Baptist shows up with tracts? You get the first Seventh-day Adventist church. So let's just do our first little summary. Constantine, his, uh, that argument of him changing the Sabbath, it goes way back to the at least the 1600s. I mean, it, it probably even predates this book that I have here from 1635. Seventh-day Baptists, they accused Constantine of changing the Sabbath long before the Seventh-day Adventists did. And the Seventh-day Adventists really are nothing more than converted Seventh-day Baptists who just copied their Constantine argument. And that's, of course, the genesis of it today. So, now the real question is, did Constantine really change the Sabbath in 321 AD when he wrote his law? The issue is not that Constantine had a law in 321 AD and, and, and where he had the people in his realm let them celebrate a Sabbath, amongst other things. And, um, but really the issue is, the Christian church, this is how it's presented by Seventh-day Adventists, the Christian church was celebrating these Saturday Sabbath up until 321 AD when Constantine changed the law. So is that really what happened? And you know what? You know what the answer is? No. No, no, no. That is not what happened. Because Constantine can't change what Christians were already doing. There is nothing to change. Like I said, no exception here about him presenting his law in 321 AD, but the Christian church had already been and already was practicing the Lord's Day. Here's, here's what happened. We got a document called the Didache. You can see it here at the bottom of the screen. Discovered in 1873. Ah, when was the Seventh-day Adventist Church formed? 1863. So we got a document after the founding of the Seventh-day Adventist Church describing first century Christian church practices. And you know what? It shows that Christians celebrated the Lord's Day. So let's talk about this document. Let me show you, I'm going to show you this book here. This is where um, a lot of what I have is coming from. This is a book by Philip Schaff. This book here is dated 1889, and it's called The Teaching of the Twelve Apostles, or The Oldest Church Manual, The Didache and Kindred Documents, and the original, yada, yada, yada. You can see it at the bottom of the screen, printed in 1889. And what does Philip Schaff tell us here? The document was, this, was hiding in plain sight in a monastery in Constantinople. They didn't know what they had until this Greek Orthodox bishop shows up, goes in their library, and and pulls this out of the library, and he was fluent in the languages, and he started translating it and realized what he had. Now, he discovered it in 1873, he didn't publish it until 1883, it took him 10 years. The document's real small, it doesn't take 10 years to translate it. What happened is you had this thing in the middle called the, the Russian-Turkey War that delay things. So when that settled down is when he had a chance to look at and examine the manuscript. Now, the Christian world already knew the Didache was in existence. Didn't have one because ancient authors had cited it. For example, Clement of Alexandria in 201 to 203 AD, he quoted from the Didache, he quoted it as scripture. Now, he was inaccurate by doing that because as the Christian church was coming together and deciding you know, what was scripture and what wasn't scripture, we have um, Asubius in 321 AD. It says, okay, he acknowledged the existence of the Didache and said, well, while you know the document exists and it describes church practices, it's not scripture. It doesn't belong in the Bible. So what the Christian church eventually did was like many other documents of that time, they recognize that some were scripture, some weren't scripture, even though they were read in the church. What the Didache does, though, it recognizes first century Christian church behaviors, activities, and practices. The manuscript he found is dated about 1056 AD, and the consensus today, maybe not so much when it was first discovered, but today, consensus is this document is a first century document describing what Christians were doing in the first century. So, 
at Venice, you, you got to be you got to be reeling right now and spinning in your mind, going, "What? We got a first century document that says Christians celebrate on the Lord's Day? Yeah." And you know what else I found? I searched over eight thousand Seventh Day Adventist magazines, Review and Heralds, Ministry magazines. I got every one of them off your archive site. So my limitations are whatever they put up, and in some cases they end them in 1998 or the case they end them in 2013 or 2014 whatever it is so I don't have the most up-to-date magazines but I have everyone on the archive website I got over 8,000 magazines searched them all here's what I found my earliest citation of the Didache is in Ministry Magazine in July 1930 the latest citation I have of the Didache is December of 2011 the Review and Herald cites the Didache numerous times from July 11th of 1935 to May 28th of 1998. But here's the point. No ministry magazine or review and herald citation doubts the authenticity of the Didache. I think that's a key point. Now it's cited favorably many times in ministry magazine. For example, here's just three examples that I, that I just pulled out at random. One, it, it, it recognizes that Didache permits baptism by pouring. It says you can immerse, but you can also pour in terms of baptism. I found lots of ministry magazine and review and herald citations in the Didache in terms of fasting, because the Didache mentions fasting twice a week, and it mentions certain days to fast. And so I found that in the, in the review and herald of ministry magazines where there's lots of discussion on those days and fasting. And I like this one, ministry magazine, February 2005 is in line with modern archaeology and acknowledges the Didache as a first century document. Thank you, Review and Herald, for getting that right. And there are other additional favorable citations. Like I said, the Ministry Magazine, Review and Herald, completely favorable on the Didache. So what you have here in front of you is just, and, and you can go look at the Didache yourself. Here is the translation from this gentleman right here in this book called The Apostolic Fathers. And it's by J.B. Lightfoot. It's a, as an advantage, you should have this book. You, can, you ought to have the copy of this Didache in your library so you can read it yourself. Until you do, you can look at this website here. And the Didache is arranged in what they call chapters. Chapters are very small, very short. But we are going to look at chapter 14. And you can see here, there's chapter 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. We're going to really hone in on chapter 14. So let's look at chapter 14 right now in much bigger print. I underline chapter 14 verse 1 and it reads what? And on the Lord's day gather yourselves together and break bread and give thanks. Wow. There you go Seventh-day Adventist. What was the Christian church doing in the first century? Gathering on the Lord's day. They weren't celebrating the Sabbath. That was for the Jew. This is the Christian. They were on the Lord's Day. So remember what I said earlier, this is a historical document that was founded 10 years after your church was founded and recognized as authentic by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And here's what it says, Christians gathered on the Lord's Day. Emperor Constantine he didn't change any historic practices of Christianity. Christianity has already been worshiping on the Lord's Day and continues to do so today. So in summary, Emperor Constantine, he didn't change the Sabbath because now we have historical archaeological evidence that Christians in the first century had already been worshiping on the Sabbath in that document. But you know, here's the larger lesson. If you got some pet theological justification, it can be instantly destroyed by archaeology as this just was. At least just was in this video, but since 1883 when it was first actually published in the Christian world has actually destroyed that. So you know what? Every time if you're an Adventist and you and you say Emperor Constantine changed the Sabbath, I want you to know that you are not telling the truth and you are citing historical error. We have a magazine recognized, we have a, I'm sorry, we have a, a historical document recognized by your church as authentic. So if you're going to say Emperor Constantine changed the Sabbath, you are being dishonest. You are citing historical error and you need to cease. So with that said, 
I want to say you can read at the bottom of the screen here, 2 Timothy 4, 3, 4, for the time is coming, and the time is here, when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Emperor Constantine changing the Sabbath is a myth.